Hello, everybody. Happy Monday night. I know we're a night earlier than normal, but we're having a really, really fun episode this week of the 48 Minutes Basketball Network. Uh, I am Tim Daniel, and it is TBT week. So we are lucky enough to be joined by someone who's going to inform us a little bit and educate us a bit on that. But before we get to that, let's introduce our excellent panel, as always, my good friend and hopefully yours, Mr. Sean Mackey. Hey, Tim. How are you? Good, man. Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. And also, of course, joining us as he does each and every week, my good friend, my man, 100 grand himself, Mr. Ben Brown. What's going on, gentlemen? Hope everybody's having a good evening. Just chilling out. Uh, I, I'm I'm really excited about our guests, so I'm not going to say any more. So. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, like Ben, so we do have our a guest here. Uh, this is a former 11 year NBA vet. Two years at the University of Cincinnati, where he played in a Final Four and an Elite Eight. He has also been teammates with Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, Scottie Pippen, Kobe Bryant, and then the list goes on and on. And is now the coach of the TBT Nasty Natty team, representing the University of Cincinnati, Mr. Corey Blunt. Welcome to the show, man. It's good to have you on. Man, thank you. Thank you very much. And I see I see, I got a Bulls fan in here. Yeah, two of them. Okay, well. I can see him representing a little stronger than you with that. Bike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got a, I've got a Benny Funko Pop right here. You can barely see it, but I promise uh, he's there. My, yeah, closer to the screen or something. Yeah, yeah. See, there's, there's that. So, okay, okay. okay. Right. Full yeah. fans in the building. He's there. There you go. Yeah. Where yeah. You ben. Ben nah, the man. fan. I'm a, I'm a Pacer <laughs> fan. Oh, oh, I thought he said clip. Man, I was about to say, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, hey, you just, Clipper fans have only been around about three years. You know what I mean? That, you know. <laughs> well, Corey, we're obviously stoked to have you on. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about just everything going on. But obviously, the main reason we're here is promote TBT. Uh, we've got the cross stand collaborative this weekend with your team and Team Zip Em Up, the Xavier alumni, uh, ran by... D. Davis and Rick Carter. You're also working with uh, another friend of the program, Mr. Kevin Johnson. So obviously a really cool event. This is going to be awesome for the city of Cincinnati. Uh, talk a little bit about how you got involved in TBT and kind of becoming the coach of the team. Well, from what I was told, uh, Kevin Johnson is the general manager, and he was considering, you know, a couple other former UC guys. And he asked his dad, and I think he asked a few other alumni, who do you think could help us win and bring some luck at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, everybody said Corey Blunt. So I ended up getting the job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always tell, I always kid myself saying I'm the luckiest uh, Bearcat and basketball player in the world based on the success I had my two years at UC and for me to go on and play. As long as I did, I always consider I'm one of the luckiest players and the win, too. I won at both levels, so it's a lot of luck involved in that. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, you won a lot of places. Uh, you played on. You played during the infamous 90s era of the Bulls. So obviously, yep. like you know, really, unfortunately, right in the time of like when Michael retires and right when Michael comes back. So you were kind of there for that. I'm sure that was just a whole experience in and of itself, just kind of like, you know, Obviously, the last dance just came out, and everyone's talking about that and everything that goes on there. Um, and then at the same point, Three Ring Circus comes out talking about the early eras of Kobe and Shaq Lakers, and it's like you were there for all of that, literally all of it. Yes, I was. And 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 before you go on, I, you know, usually when guys introduce me like you did, say he played with Kobe Blunt, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. I usually say, no, I don't. No, I didn't play with those guys. And they say, what do you mean? I say, those guys play with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. How <clears throat> good for me to able to say that every now and then. But, no, yeah, no, I played. In, it was a good experience, man. I was there the two years. Uh, Mike retired and came back. So, unfortunately, uh, I ended up getting traded to the Lakers right after that. And after I left, they won three championships. Then I was in L.A. for four years, got traded to Phoenix, and they won three championships. <laughs> so the rumor was they just had to get rid of my ass to start winning championships. <laughs> <laughs> but I did play with some great guys, man, and had uh, phenomenal times with both of those organizations. That's awesome. 
Yeah. Well, uh, just on your playing career, I, I, I like I loved those early '90s UC teams. Like those, those teams were just. Uh, I, I mean, I'm the elder statesman of, of this crew. These guys are a little younger than I am. Uh, so I remember those uh, days fondly and, and uh, the things that you all were able to accomplish with the Final Four uh, and then get into the Elite, elite Eight. Um, tell us a little bit about, like, how those runs were. Um, you know, you always hear stories about, you know, how tough Huggins was, how tough your team was. Um, tell us a little bit how those runs for you um, were and, and your teammates and, and the things that you all were able to accomplish. Well, when I when I got to UC, I really didn't I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, you know, when Coach Huggs came to my house, he was so mild mannered and and polite and quiet when he sat there with my grandmother and I. And he set five pennies on the table and said, you know, hey, the way you play athletic as you are. You won't have to be banging in the pain. He put these five pennies out and showed me the open post offense where I'd be able to hang around the perimeter and occasionally take a three-point shot if I wanted to. And I was just like, man, that sounds beautiful. And so once I got here, I found out all that was bullshit. So that he wasn't no mild manner guy anymore once he once i signed my name i got a chance to see the real drill sergeant in him and you know, <laughs> and the, the the thing was he moved me from forward to center to make sure my mm-hmm. ass was in the post in the post <laughs> <laughs> so he told me on a recruiting trip and they also hey they also said i was gonna have a condo on the beach which we never got that neither so it was all, it was all funny game, but Besides that, man, no, it was a it was a great team, man. I think the real thing that really helped us was that we were all a bunch of JUCO guys, you know, and we were formed together, really not knowing each other. But we, we just took on this personality, like, because we were all from JUCO and, you know, we took the long route to get to a major D1. We wanted to leave our mark in our state at whatever school we decided to go to. And, and the reason I say that, because me, Eric Martin, and Terry Nelson came from California together with that mindset like like when we decided to all go to the same school whichever school we decided we just said man wherever we go we're gonna represent california and we're gonna represent junior college players and once we got to cincinnati uh it was four other junior college players on that team so we all just sat around and talked about that mentality and then coach uh huggins defensive mindness you know really wanted to enforce defensive principles and then up tempo trapping and 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 covering the whole floor, and it just it just brought that intensity that I think we needed with with every everybody we had on our team, and we just all bought into it that we wanted to be the best defensive team in NCAA basketball. And with him at the helm pushing us, you know his way of coaching was a little different, a little a little crazy, and a little took it a little used to getting used to, but. Once you understood the method of his madness and then got a chance to really understand what we was trying to accomplish as a team, he did that to get us all to buy in and believe in each other. And I think I think he was able to pull that off with our group, man, because we gelled together, we hung out together, we worked hard together, and we believed in what we were trying to accomplish once we got here. Yeah, and people that, that don't know UC basketball history – they had a lot of success in the 60s and 70s, man, but those 80s were brutal. Yeah, that's they what were I mean. not good. And, and you guys came in and um I mean, they always try to credit the the Fab 5 of of swag, but man, you guys had some swagger, boy. I tell you what, you guys came in and just changed the whole landscape of that UC basketball program. <laughs> so, that was that was always cool to see. Um, and seeing that and seeing what it's become and the legacy that you guys had started, man, it, it, it was always that, that 92, 93 or 91, 92, 93 group, man, is, is a special group. Yeah. When, when, when I signed, I, I always tell this story the, the, the week I signed my letter of intent, I came back home and it was the first time you see basketball. I mean, you see football was being played on, on national TV. They played Penn state. <laughs> So I invited everybody over to the house to watch the game and make a long story short, we got beat 81 to nothing. 81, I was going to say, yeah, that was <laughs> – they got drubbed. <laughs> they got drubbed. And everybody, I remember that. Like, man, where the hell are you going to that school? <laughs> I'm not 
going for football, man. I'm going for basketball. Right. <laughs> Drug 81 and nothing, and, and everybody yeah. pissed at me because I chose to go to Cincinnati. Before I before I went there, like no one knew what that CPAW was. You know, that logo mm-hmm. was not familiar outside of Cincinnati, at least during our time. I'm sure, like he said, early history, they had real real success, but during that 80s. And early nine, uh, early nineties, it really wasn't a, a, a high level D one basketball program. And then once we got there, man, it, it just it, it used to be a good feeling, especially after we went to the final four my first year, and to come home and seeing people, celebrities wearing, you know, that C Paul man, it just knew we had did something phenomenal, and everybody respected how we played. I think they also liked the the style that Hugs brought, you know, the intensity and his demeanor far as coaching style and it was just a good good fit for everybody yeah the infamous tupac shirt there's the infamous picture of tupac where he's wearing the paul c and like that's like real that's like world famous yeah yeah we had i saw a video with dr drake being interviewed with one on so yeah we we we, we, we put uc back on the map once we when we went to the final four and then like he said we lost to another group that was supposed to be significant themselves and when we drew them man i just knew we, wasn't no way in hell we was gonna lose to a bunch of freshmen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think that might have been a problem because I was so confident that we were going to the national championship that I just couldn't see us losing to that team, man. But once we got on the court with them guys and you saw how big they were, you know, that was yeah. a team. And a lot of people don't realize they had Eric Riley at seven foot, Juwan Howard at six ten, Chris Weber at six ten. So they had size at the guard position, and they had a really, a really solid team. And we ended up losing to them by three, but you know we had a nice run and put the school back on the map. Mm-hmm. So Corey, um, obviously you leave UC, uh, you get drafted in uh, 1993, and you get drafted 25th overall, and you end up going to the Chicago Bulls right after they've won a three-peat, probably just a couple weeks after that happened. Yep. What was that like? What was your your feeling after getting drafted by such a iconic team? Well, it, the moment it happened, it was like it was like a, a little relief for me because I had met with the Bulls before, and they they pretty much had laid out that if I was still around at the twenty fifth pick, that they were going to draft me. So for that for that statement, it was a relief, but being drafted by them was definitely an honor. But going into it. I had already had uh, conversations with Jerry Krause and Phil, and they were saying that if I was around, um, I was going to be drafted by them. But I was supposed to go 17th to Boston. I thought that was pro- most likely was going to be my slot. And they ended up drafting A.C. Earl. I don't know. You guys are young, so I don't know if you are. Yeah. yeah. But they ended up drafting A.C. Earl. So I was like, oh, man, now what's going to happen? And then I'm thinking, like, okay, let's see what the Bulls do. And when they said it, it was me, Nick, Coach Hugs, Coach Moeller. We was at Coach Hugs' house watching the draft, man, and we just went bananas in there. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you, know, you automatically think, you know, they had just dominated for those three years, and now I'm getting ready to go play with the best of the best. I knew I was getting ready to have me a damn championship ring the next year. <laughs> <laughs> Mike decides to retire and it was just which we did have some success you know those we did have a pr- two yeah. good year, but we just couldn't get to the championship can i can i ask you one thing particular about that sorry to jump in sean sure no, go ahead the pippin dunk on ewing what was like were you were you on the court at the time were you on the bench like what was your reaction because you know now when i watched i still do the kind of thing yeah I mean, that was definitely one of the nastiest dunks that I had seen, but it was Pippen caught a lot of people, but it just happened to be <laughs> against anything you do against the Knicks is gonna be really overemphasized just based on that rivalry right there. When he caught him and then mushed him down and stepped over him and then walked over to Spike Lee's like, sit your little ass down. That's just <laughs> On him, so we went banana. That was one of the sweetest dunk. And plus, Pippen was my guy. Still is a close friend of mine. And he the one who really, like, my rookie year, man, he really embraced me and kind of told me what I needed to do to be a, uh, a pro in this league. And watching him do do what he did that year to carry us the way he did. I mean, he led our he led our team in every category. That That's just amazing right there. I don't know no other pro team. This is the pros, you know what I mean? And you 
you join the team and, and then you got a guy that's leading the steals, rebounds, scoring, assists, block shots. He led in all categories that year. And then to finish on, on Ewing like that, it was it was nasty. Yeah, Sean and I, like I said, we're obviously biased Bulls fans, but we've always said that um, we're one phantom foul away from Scottie Pippen having seven championships. So, Man, that's why yeah. if, if I ever catch Hugh Holland walking to the store, going to get some, I'll slap him upside his head because – that was a terrible call, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got one more question for you. So obviously you played um, 11 years in the NBA, which is a really, really long time, which is incredible. <clears throat> Not that many players even get to play 11 years. So that just talks about how great and lucky your career was to be able to, to do that for so long. But um, – you played with all these great stars. Was there? Did you have like an underrated teammate that over over your career, like a guy that a lot of other people fans wouldn't see as someone that you thought was just that really brought a team up to another level? Underrated? Um, it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard for me to answer that because I played with like the elite of the elite. If that makes <laughs> like, you know, yeah. With Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, then you go to LA, you get on the team with Kobe and Shaq, then you go to Phoenix, you play with Jason Kidd and Penny Hardaway, and then I end up going where I go to Golden State, which wasn't well, no, that's the team right there. If you want to talk about a bad team at the time, <laughs> <laughs> I think I played games after I got there, but I played well. I think I had my best career numbers on that team, but we were terrible. But an uh, underachiever, I'm trying to – now, to me, based on his time, like I was with the Suns his rookie year, and Sean Marion was one kid that I thought, you know, they were always trying to fix his shot. They were just saying, you know, he's an undersized four, and they couldn't really figure out where he fit in at. But he had that special gift of being able to, like – Sean has the fastest, like, second jump than anybody in the league, like – that's how he's able to rebound so well because he, he he he's barely on the floor. You know, he it's like I don't really know how to describe it, but he can go up for a rebound and 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 then come back, hit the floor, and go up before everybody else does. And at that size and him him able to do that, I think that's what helped him, you know, proclaim his career because Sean Sean had a great career. I mean, he was yeah. champion, and for him to go from when he first came in the league, where they were saying it's you know he had that little. Uh, Mm -hmm. With his butt out shot, you know, he had his butt sticking out. But it was – and they were trying to fix that. But once he got on the floor, man, he was a, he was a matchup nightmare for – he was too too fast for guys bigger than he was and too tall and strong for guys littler than he was. So I, I would say Sean Marion would probably be one of those guys. Okay. Yeah. He, he's one of those guys that, like, because of NBA 2K and then putting classic players in there, like, kids are, like, seeing how good he really was. Yeah. And that's one of those things that's really nice about that kind of stuff. Um, so real quick, we'll kind of, you know, kind of, we're kind of going around everywhere, but so with this TV team team coming up, obviously you guys have a really good roster going into this tournament. And, um, I think one of the cool pluses you guys have is, you know, just recently when the NBA was going through all their COVID issues with their rosters, you have two guys in your roster who just played in the NBA last year and yep. Trey Scott and Jaron Cumberland, who also had hell of careers that you see together. Um, you know, we're, all American athletic conference guys, guys I got to see on a daily basis play. And um, so kind of like what, you know, how much of an advantage do you feel that gives you for you guys, like going into guys who just played the best of the best, maybe it was only for a handful of games, but having that, you of all people can speak to that, having that experience of being in there and being training with those guys, even if it's for a week, how much of a plus does that give you guys going into this tournament? You know, I think being familiarized with everybody's game, it does give you a plus, but you still have to be able to gel and, and put those pieces in place where we can really understand how they work together to get wins. And I think that's going to be the real thing that I've noticed the last couple of years in the TBT. Our teams haven't been able to, like, have that chemistry, I think, if that's – that's sure. when I watched the play and, and we were exited a few times, it was always like there was something missing you know, on those teams. And I don't, I can't say it was a coach and I can't say it was the players. I really can't say what it is, but whatever it was, it wasn't enough to make it to that next, that next, that next round. So my goal, you know, talking to KJ, man, I just want to really try to get these guys together. You know, we only got a week. So let's find out really, how can we put guys in the, 
in the best position for them to succeed with their strengths and then try to hide their weaknesses by getting everybody to support each other. And if we're able to pull that off, man, with the guys that we have, I think we got some nice bigs. You know, guard play is all – I think in today's game, guard play is is good all over. You know, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. these kids and these – at this – at after high school and college, man, the guard level is – guard play is just phenomenal to me right now. You, there's no such thing as a scrub guard no more. Everybody can shoot, seem like it, and everybody know how to get to their they spots on the floor. So – I think with this group, man, my my purpose and my goal as the head coach, I just really want to try to put these put these guys in a system where we can find out what's going to help us win that first game. That's I'm not looking to the second game. I'm not looking to the third game. I'm looking to play. Uh, oh my God, I forgot the name of the team that quick. Indiana. Uh, you guys got the uh, Indiana All Stars. I think it was yeah something like. Oh man, it's Evan. Is it Evansville? I, I think can't. you're. I got pulled up, but I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah, but that, uh, so after looking at the schedule and, and kind of looking at the film that we had of that team, I think it's just going to be important for us to kind of impose our style on them. They got a solid team, and I looked at the other rosters on some of these other teams, so everybody has talent. That's that's. I don't think that's going to be the deciding factor. I think it's on how these guys be able to gel together and understand what their purpose is, and it's a, it's a one-game elimination, so – you know, you lose one game, it's it's sirenara. So my goal is to get get past this one game. And I, I learned my lesson early on. I'm gonna tell you guys this story. I was the assistant coach at Cincinnati with Andy Kennedy, and uh, it was right before the crosstown shootout. And they they the radio station had hired uh, had asked me and uh, uh, what's the what's the head coach? He was at Louisville, Chris Mack. Yeah. Matt. They, me and Chris Mack to come on and do the radio. And now I'm fresh from retiring. I'm still in my my players mode. Like, oh, we about to destroy them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how Chris is, though. So it was like it was Chris is still that way. Well, I mean, what that's what he told me <laughs> at the interview. Like, you know, I'm I'm talking shit basically. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Boy, you know what, man? You did a great interview, man. He said, but it's one problem. I said, what's that? You're not playing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked out of there like, damn, you know what? He right. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up getting beat, man. And I said, man, that was a humbling experience right there. I'm not going to, as a coach, I'm not going to be talking shit no more. I'm just going to be <laughs> <laughs> this and able to win games, man. So that's why I'm, that's my approach with this right now. Well, Saturday is obviously a really, really cool day. Like I said, it's going to be awesome for the city. Um, the Crosstown Collaborative, where the Zip'em Up team and the Nasty Natty are playing in an exhibition. Um, you know, from being someone who played in the rivalry, I was at the press conference. That's where we met when you said, just so you guys know, I never lost to Xavier. You were the only person in that room that could say that. <laughs> <laughs> but Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Coming back to it, and like even if it's an exhibition, obviously there's a lot of competitive nature between these two schools, and you know even like you know there was still like I've heard like talking to a bunch of guys like yeah you know in the court it was that but like we still hung out in this in the summer all these guys playing the Smith League together so yeah. like what's that kind of like for you coming back I mean you I know you never forget about the rivalry because Crosstown is just awesome there's nothing like it but like coming back and being a part of it again in like a different stage it's got to be a pretty cool feeling. Oh yeah, it's it's. I think I put it on Twitter. Like, man, it, it's no better feeling knowing that you're a part of one of the most successful and and most publicized rivalries in college basketball. That shootout is an is an awesome time in Cincinnati. Uh, the competitiveness, the the teams. You know, it seemed like the team that's supposed to win usually don't win because of the intensity and 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 wanting to upset each other. So it's just a phenomenal. It's a phenomenal game, man, and the history of it just kind of exemplifies that 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 whole demeanor of what it takes to win in that in that shootout. And I think that's what's been promoted around here even before I got here. Like, you know, I told I think I told the story uh, when we got here. Like, we ba- I barely knew about Cincinnati basketball, so you know I didn't know nothing about Xavier basketball. And then, <laughs> mm-hmm. To see the hype that we getting ready to play these guys, I'm like. That's a Catholic school. Like, man, where is that? I don't. I never even heard of Xavier. So, 
And Hugs was like, well, you'll find out, man. You guys got to come ready to play. And then they stuck the mic in front of Terry Nelson's face, and Terry made the comment, man, we're going to beat them dudes by 30. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say that for? Hugs came in and practiced right after he – the guy who's averaging 2.3 points a damn game is making predictions. <laughs> <laughs> after did that, you know, we had his back. You know, I'm like, man, Terry, forget what Hugs talking about. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna kick their butt tomorrow, and and we did it, man. And it was, it was such an intense uh, game that you just feel the electricity, the fan support. You know, they try to make it seem like you see a uh, crowd back then was the the wild ones, but I'll never forget we went in the Xavier's gym. It was, it was on a whole nother level, man. So, mm-hmm. good rivalry. You were actually sitting next to me in the suite you were in this year for Crosstown. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, that place, Crosstown's my favorite game of the year. And being, and I've been in both arenas now for it. And, like, I understand. I've never been to Duke, North Carolina. I've never been to Kentucky, Louisville. But there is something really different about that. There's something really different about being, like, getting to the arena that day and seeing the students lined up and all the tailgates and all the tents with people who are sleeping overnight to get student tickets. There's, yeah. it, there's nothing like it. There's really nothing like it. Yeah, the year before that, I sat uh, the next aisle over from the student section at Xavier. That was that was something. <laughs> it's, they are, yeah, they're they get into it. Yeah, they get into it. But it was a good. It was an exciting, exciting, exciting rivalry right there, man. And they were talking. They was a little a little worried that it was going. They, they weren't going to continue it for a minute there. Yeah. And I, I definitely made my voice uh heard on that i think that would have been the wrong thing to do man because this is good for the city you know competition is is great and even at that level it should even still be you know real intensified so i I thought that that would have been a bad mistake if they would have canceled that yeah i totally agree um so i'll ask you this uh before i let the other guys hop in for a little bit so obviously our website we're credentialed for both schools so we're lucky enough we're at every home game um, so, you know, I get to be around, you know, while I get to be around Xavier a lot, I also get to be around Cincinnati a lot. And I just, you know, we just had the first year with Wes Miller yep. and even though the results weren't what they wanted, you can tell, like, there's something about him that's really special. And he fits like, he kind of fits like the last puzzle piece for this program. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what he's going to do with Cincinnati. I really feel like he is the guy to kind of get them back to competing for conference championships every year, leading them into the big 12. How do you as an alumni feel about Wes kind of being going into year two and kind of being the guy to take this to the next step? Me personally, I, I really like Wes. And I'm not saying that just because I'm on. The, I, I, I've, I've had a chance to see him uh, coach. I had to see I had a chance to see his his vision and hear his vision for the program. I think that he wants to do all he possibly can to win. He's a he's a winner. He's a competitor. You know, it's just. It's easy for us to say he's the guy, but until he proves it, it ain't it ain't gonna matter what we say. You know, we can hope and wish and pray, but if those W's don't come in and those those conference championships don't come in, you know, the one thing about college basketball, they will let you go if you're not getting the job done. So that's right. Mm-hmm. I really believe that he has the uh, capabilities and the ability to to bring UC basketball, you know. I don't think it was it was it never left the limelight. I just think we're in a we're in that transitional period where things just have to be uh brought to the forefront again. And I think he's the guy to do it. You know, it's just gonna be, you know, it's all about recruiting at this level and bringing those right guys in to fit your system. And I think he's he's in a real, real good position to do that. Uh, you know, the guy reminded me, uh, you know, I was one of those guys a little pissed when they hired him, you know, because I didn't really know much about him and of course, I was fighting for my guys to get the job, but uh, one of those boosters told me about well, when Hugs came here, you know, he had to build his program up. So you got to give Wes some time, and and we really believe in him. So after meeting him and, and understanding his vision for the program, I think we're in good hands. I can honestly say that. Yeah, I agree. I'm excited. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I was that was probably going to be one of my next questions, but uh, another one of my questions was. How involved are you in the UC program still? Do you still get the practices? Do you? I mean, I know you go to games, of course, obviously, but do you get the practices? Do you do you reach out to some of the younger players, kind of help mentor, do things like that? Um, are you are you around them a lot? 
Um, it, it's been a transition, you know, of course, when Hugs was here, I was, I was at the school every day, you know what I mean? Then Hugs left, and of course, AK got the job for a minute, so I was around the kids every day. Then they hired Mick. I knew Mick before when he was an assistant for Hugs, so I was around the program every day, you know. And then Mick left, and they brought in John Brennan, who I wasn't really familiar with, but it was an open door policy for all the alumni to come back uh, to the program and be a part of it. I honestly don't think, I can honestly say that since I've been out of pro basketball, Mick, John Brennan has, has, has did nowhere near the level of bringing guys back like this coach has, you know, he, he, he embraces it. He, 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 he wants you to, he wants everybody to come back because he comes from North Carolina and he always talked about the tradition. You know, he understands the tradition and, and he, he, he pushes for guys to come back. Matter of fact, he called me yesterday, like, man, we got practice tomorrow. I'd love to see your face in the building, you know? So with that, man, I'm, I'm a Bearcat till I die. I mean, the school has done so much for me. It's forgiven me for past mistakes I've made. It's welcomed me back when I've, been that that lost child you know and i've always had respect and and admiration for the university not just because i did well in basketball there but i'm also a graduate of the university of cincinnati so it's in my blood my dna man and whenever i can do anything to help that school or that program i'm there on call that's cool i i had wondered how how that relationship was with with just alumni in general just i know with the transition with mick and john um, you know, I knew that there were some, not really frictions, but they weren't as open about bringing guys back. So I was wondering how West was with that and if, if it had changed and if, if you do, if you got, you got, I know, I know Terry's still local. Um, a couple of the other guys are still low. Yeah. They're, I, Terry rests my son's games. I, you know, he's a good dude. Oh. Um, yeah, he's, he's a good people. <laughs> yeah. I, he always knows when I'm in the gym, I'm like. Hey man, stop making all them bad calls. He's like, hey. man, you better leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> tell, him, tell him to run down the court and make the play, and not blow the whistle like all no. the other. <laughs> 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 From way back in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I had just wondered that. I mean, I knew with with different regimes and different coaches, you know, I you know, it, it's good to hear that. I mean, because like I said before, you guys had created such a legacy and put that you know see paul back on the map and yeah i was hoping that those guys have been open to having you guys back in yeah wes has been phenomenal i can i, I can say that open hearted he has been phenomenal yeah. him and his staff yeah yeah i know having demar around is awesome again oh, like yeah. seeing demar johnson is all the time is awesome like i was a huge demar johnson fan as a kid so uh yeah. i could see him quite a bit um this is a out of the left field, because I mean, you mentioned playing the Fab Five earlier. So I forgot you were teammates with Jalen Rose for a little bit. Yep. We had your old teammate, Kendall Gill, on like, the first year we did this podcast. Okay. And we asked about when he went and played for the Bulls, and it was the 04 team with you, Jay, Scotty Pippen came back. And he kind of said something to us about we should have been way better than we were but things were going on behind closed doors that we that just kind of got in our way. How much are you allowed to tell us of what got in the way? Oh man, that's, that's an interesting statement. Things that got in the way. I, Cause Mike didn't come back to the following year. So I don't know what he could be thinking. I don't know what he could be talking about. Honestly. Uh, let me look, think back at that team. Yeah, you guys were like 22 and 60. I think you just traded Eddie Curry. No, that wasn't that year, was it? It was pretty late. It was like well, early 2000s. Yeah, I think um, that year. Oh, I'm thinking you're talking about my fault. Yeah, that year. Yeah, it was a lot going on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we had just, dra they had just drafted Tyson and Eddie, you know, who were high school kids. And they wanted them to get those minutes that they – they really shouldn't have got, but because they were the, the the future of the program, they were playing a little more than probably they should have. Not they were both talented kids. Trust me when I say that. But they hadn't had a chance to prove that they were those that that next level 
player as far as carry a team. And, and, and we, it was a lot of things where they were able to, just who they were, were able to get, get a lot of time. And it was a develop. We all had to buy in to help develop those guys to make them succeed at that level. And it, you know, it was, it was tough because, you know, you had a bunch of veterans on that team who, who knew that, Hey man, I know, I remember it was a period of time when, when Eddie had to go up to Jerry and tell them like, man, if I don't get more playing time, I'm, I'm telling my agent, I want to get out of here. So they called me to the, to the office and was like, man, Corey, you're playing well, but, uh, you know, Eddie's Eddie has to play, you know, and that, that's, mm-hmm. that stage I was old and shit anyway. So I'm like, well, man, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they win, but they, it was almost like they were willing to sacrifice losses to, to, to develop those guys. I put it like that. I have to ask this as a Bulls fan. This is just a total Homer Bulls fan in my heart question. I know Sean and I, would be competing to ask, what's it like to have your name introduced in the starting lineup at the United Center? I don't know how it is now, but back then, man, my man, I can't, what was his? I can't remember his name, but he had the the livest introduction. That introduction was fire, man. Yeah. <laughs> when he said Michael Jordan, and it was really fired in. But even after after Mike left, yeah, that was that was awesome. That was an awesome feeling right there. Yeah, I always wondered because like so, you know, I uh with League Pass, you can get like they let you watch like the inside the arena cam when they yeah. do a commercial and stuff, so you get to see it still and you, know, you still hear the Alan Parsons project, you still get like the energy and stuff, so it's pretty cool. Um all right, my last question but for you're a little young. I am young. I'm 33. <laughs> oh, I think you're you're muted there for a second. I'm sorry, sorry. Like can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I played in the old stadium. And you talking about to play ball and watch basketball. To me, it wasn't nothing like that old Chicago Bulls stadium. And and then the, the starting five in there was so hype because I don't know if you were like allowed to smoke in that arena, but it was always smoky in there for some reason. <laughs> 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 so I, that used to be part of the hype, man. Where you just had, and then they built the United. We, I can, man. None of us liked the United Center transitioning from the old stadium at first. Even Mike complained about it. Oh, really? Huh? Yeah, yeah. It just wasn't the same like vibe in there. Like that older, that old stadium just gave you a a different feel. Is I guess it would be almost like how Boston fans feel about mm-hmm. the Garden in a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I have to get you out of here on this because we've we covered TBT, we covered your career. We've had a lot of really a lot of fun having you on for about 40 minutes or so. So from those old training camps in Hawaii, do you have any safe for work stories you can tell us about Shaquille O'Neal and what it was like off the court? Man, Shaquille was crazy, man. <laughs> 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 man, Shaq was Shaq was a clown, man. It, it was I can tell you this story. It was uh uh Tyron Tyron Lou's rookie year. And Shaq had kept telling Ty, Tyrone, like, man, look, if you don't start carrying these bags, you know, we're gonna get you, man. And Tyrone was like, Man, y'all ain't doing nothing to me, man. I ain't on that rookie shit. You know, he just always said, Man, I ain't on that rookie shit. So Shaq come to me like, man, look. I'm getting ready to go to the store. I'm getting ready to go spend about $250 on masking tape. <laughs> and man, we go catch Tyrone coming out of his room and we just go tackle him and we go wrap this dude up with masking <laughs> tape. <laughs> man, boy, we caught his ass coming out of his room, man. We all of us had our tape, man. We. <laughs> We wrapped Ty up so tough, man. It took him like an hour and a half to get all that tape off his butt. <laughs> and that was all Shaq because he didn't want to get, uh, I think Shaq told him to go get him some donuts or something. And Ty said, man, I ain't doing that rookie stuff. And after that, so, you know, that was part of it. I guess one of the other stories that when he was, uh, I know you guys heard the infamous story about him and Kobe having a fight, just the infamous mm-hmm. slap. Yeah, I was there when that happened, man. I was 
that was some, you know, we were playing open gym and I was on Kobe's team and we, you know, we were winning and, and Shaq just started calling all these crazy fouls. And Kobe was just so, he was, he was ridiculously competitive. Like he wanted to win every damn game. And it was just like, it was almost overbearing at times because dude, okay, you just lost one game. Why is you having this panic attack? We going to get back on the floor. You know what I mean? Like we got 12 more games to play, but he'd be so pissed after losing one. And Shaq kept calling these fouls and Kobe just out of nowhere said, man, stop playing. Stop calling those soft ass fouls. And Shaq was like, what'd you say? You heard me, man. Stop calling them soft ass fouls. And so we, I stopped too. Like, yeah, man, that is, that was a soft call, man. And Shaq <laughs> said, well, you say one more. You say one more thing to me, I'm going to slap you. And, you know, we all like, man, whatever, man. And Kobe said, man, well, stop calling them soft. And as soon as he said soft, Shaq just, bow. <laughs> <laughs> I froze. I looked at all the colonies like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and then Kobe was like, Kobe took it. Like, boom, Kobe took the slap and was like, oh, is that all you got? As big as you are, that's all you got. And then I saw Shaq eyes, and I, I think we grabbed Kobe. Like, man, chill out, man. We ain't gonna be able to keep this dude off. off here. So that, that it didn't go no further than that. But yeah, that was another story about him and that. So that really did happen, and Shaq really did slap him in the face. So. I always heard that story. So that's a fantastic story. That yes, is. Yep. that is. Yep. Well, man, this was awesome. Thank you so much for, one, hanging out with us for 40 minutes. Two, doing it in your car when it's, like, still 85 degrees out. So really appreciative of that. So thank you for that, man. Yeah, um, man, no problem. I got some Pacers story, but we ain't got time. You know, that was a, that was a interesting <laughs> team over there, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We can yeah. we can make this we can make that we can make part two of this happen if you're down. Yeah, yeah. Man, that, Reggie, that Reggie Miller was something else, man. I'm gonna end uh, it like that. Reggie was something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we'll have to yeah, we're gonna say we'll have to get into that next time, part two. No doubt, yeah. man. No doubt. Anytime, Absolutely, fellas. Well, check out crosstownclabber.com, see what the TBT guys are doing. Get to Cintas this week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Both Zip them up and the Nasty Natty playing on Monday night. And then Saturday, the classic exhibition where you'll see the Jaron Cumberlands, the Trayvon Blewitts, the JP Makiras, the Trey Scotts, everyone back on the floor. And I just saw Zip them up, just added my guy Nate Johnson to the team. So going to be excited to see Nate again. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a good night. Yeah, fr- Friday night, we're at Migos. We're having, oh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, make that announcement that we're all at uh, Migos and Clifton. Friday night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we'll probably Come swing by there, man. All right, Corey. Well, All thank right, you fellas. so much. Have Appreciate a good night, everybody. You. Thank you, right. Corey. Yep. See you, Corey.